negative pressure isolation room information system. Hello, this is Chi Hong Kim, a manager in charge of negative pressure isolation room information system in health insurance review and assessment service. The lecture will look at the Negative Pressure Isolation Room Information, NPIRI system, which was developed to promptly and efficiently allocate severe COVID-19 patients to negative pressure rooms. This lecture will cover the system flow and how to use it as well as prerequisite condition to develop the system. This course consists of the contents as listed above and I will explain you about each of the topics in order from the requirements to build the system to how to use the monitoring function. The purpose of this course is to help you understand how the negative pressure isolation room information system in Korea works. Detailed items to be submitted by medical institutions regarding the operating status of negative pressure rooms and how to report them and how the health authorities monitor the collected information. I will briefly explain you about background of the negative pressure isolation room information system and the negative pressure room. The government needed to identify nationwide status on the use of negative pressure isolation rooms, which are vital equipment to treat the patients. To monitor the status, the government had to make a call, and it made the officials heavily overworked. As a result, HIDA developed NPIRIS for only two weeks to allocate hospital beds for patients with severe COVID-19 promptly and efficiently. We often use the term negative pressure rooms. I will give you an idea on what that means. A negative pressure room is a type of hospital room specially designed to separate a certain group of patients from other patients to hospitalize and provide medical treatments. Basically, the air pressure inside the room is lower than the air pressure outside the room, so that the air inside the room will not flow to the outside, although non-contaminated filtered air will flow into the negative pressured room. Contaminated air is sucked out of the room with a filtration system that cleans the air to prevent the flow of the virus to the outside. There are some requirements for successful operation and establishment of the negative pressure room operating status information system. First, the roles of each participating agency, such as medical institutes and health authorities, should be defined clearly. For instance, medical institutions should know the time to update their status. Health authorities should have guidelines on when, how, and which items they should analyze to make decisions. And the Health Insurance Review and Assessment Service, HIDA, should know how it can support the system maintenance and improvement activities to avoid any confusions that may occur. Second, there should be the contact information of persons in charge of reporting the status in hospitals for precise monitoring. This is particularly important to check and determine the consistency and accuracy of data submitted by hospitals. Third, the ICT infrastructure to collect, process, and manage the status of medical resources should be built in advance. HEDA has already established such infrastructure available to collect and process the information of approximately 95,000 medical institutions, including data on human resources, facilities, equipment, etc. Hence, we were able to support K-Quarantine system to fight against COVID-19 in time. The three items mentioned above are the pillars for successful operation of the system. Now you are seeing the Information System Flow Diagram, the designated healthcare centers to treat patients with severe symptoms are required to update their operating status of negative pressure rooms in a predetermined time, 9 a.m., each day. The health authorities monitor the status and promptly allocate proper rooms to the patients in serious condition by region to help them receive medical treatment they need. The main function of Negative Pressure Isolation Room Information System is to report on the Negative Pressure Room operating status by hospital and monitor the operating status by the health authorities in real time. There are largely four monitoring items regarding the operating status of Negative Pressure Rooms, and they are, first, the status of hospital beds with regard to the number of hospital beds with negative pressure equipment and their availability. Types of such beds include negative pressure rooms in the ICU or ones for single patient or multiple occupancy in ICU and isolated hospital beds without negative pressure. Second, the status of COVID-19 patients administered to the hospital 
and which includes the number of patients administered by severity, moderate severe, and availability to administer such patients. Third, the status of medical equipment and healthcare workers, including the types of infectious disease treatment equipment, breaching machine, CRRT, ECMO, and their availability, and number of medical staffs, such as infectious disease specialists, respiratory physicians, infection control nurses, including both advanced practiced, registered nurse, and practice nurse. Fourth, the status of persons in charge of updating the status during weekdays, weekends, and holidays, as well as contact information of those responsible for administration and bed allocation. We are monitoring and receiving the information listed above for 97 healthcare centers designated by the health authorities to provide medical treatments to patients in serious conditions. Moving on to the access to reporting and monitoring on the operating status of negative pressure rooms. First, access to the Medical Resource Report Portal of HEDA. This site is largely divided into two sections. Report on the status of COVID-19 medical resources and COVID-19 medical resources monitoring to prevent confusion of reporting agency and monitoring agency. Report on the status of COVID-19 medical resources section is available to medical institutions to treat patients in critical condition only. Users can find the section from the COVID-19 reporting menu. They can report or query the operating status of negative pressure rooms through this page. Access to COVID-19 medical resources monitoring is allowed to health authorities only. Click My Page to find COVID-19 medical resources monitoring. This menu allows the users to monitor the operating status of negative pressure rooms by region. Let me explain how medical institutions treating patients in critical condition report their operating status of negative pressure rooms. The base date is the date that a hospital submits their operating status, and the base date does not overlap with other date. Users can submit a new report or change their report if the base date is the same with the current date. However, the data submitted before the current date cannot be changed and users can search the report only. The reason why only data search is available for the one submitted before the base date is because of that the health authorities make decisions based on the submitted status. The submitted data should remain intact to identify the statistical trends. Next, I'll explain you some notable items. The base data is set as the current data for a new report or correction and the date is set as the day when the report was made to initiate search function. In such case, data correction is not allowed. To improve the consistency and usability of data, each medical institute treating patients in critical condition is required to prepare and submit their operating status of negative pressure rooms in every morning at 9 a.m. As for status by severity, this system provides auto-calculation features by submitting values to the items to find a subtotal or total for use or convenience. The status of medical equipment, medical personnel, and persons in charge is set to show the latest data submitted automatically for the convenience of medical institutions. An alert message pops up if the availability to use additional medical equipment and persons in charge fields are omitted as they are set as required. The screen is switched to the list page when a user clicks the save button. Let's move on to how the health authorities utilize the monitoring function. This monitoring screen is designed to help the health authorities to check the medical resources in real time to allocate hospital beds to COVID-19 patients by region promptly and accordingly. Basically, users can search daily operating status on the base date, check the operating status of medical institutions of each 17 city and province across the country. The person in charge can also print the report in the predetermined format. With this menu, the Ministry of Health and Welfare, MOHW, and National Medical Center, NMC, can monitor the entire status of 97 healthcare centers treating patients in critical condition. For 17 cities and provinces, however, monitoring of such institutions are limited to the ones in their regions. For instance, the Seoul Health Authorities can search the ones located in Seoul only. Go on to the print function in the monitoring page. It helps users identify changes in the number of patients in critical condition and available beds for them for seven days from the base date by using the search condition as well as the operating status of negative pressure rooms by region and hospital type. 
In addition, this function also supports the conversion of file formats to Hangul, Excel, and PDF. Lastly, I will point out some highlights of today's lecture. The Negative Pressure Isolation Room Information System allows to identify the operating status of negative pressure rooms in medical institutions treating patients in critical condition in real time to allocate the beds to COVID-19 patients to provide them with medical treatments promptly and accordingly. The health authorities have established the contact information of persons in charge of such institutions to precisely identify the status and for successful operation and establishment of the system by using the contact information. The authorities constantly communicated with them to upgrade the system. Likewise, the information system greatly contributes to preventing the spread of COVID-19 preemptively. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you for listening.